All right, truss bridge. Truss bridge is a firm and usually thin structure that is normally based on a frame with a triangular shape. The shape of the truss bridge is somewhat like this. Two ends right there, or it goes around. Somewhat like that. Uh, there are triangles in series um, that are used in truss bridges as super, super structures that transfer the, lo the dead loads and live loads. Uh, the dead loads, like the steel beams that are on the bridge, and the live loads, like people and cars. Uh, a truss bridge is designed to endure extreme weights and also cover extended gaps. Truss bridges are amongst a variety of bridge designs that are being used for road traffic, uh, so cars, not uh, people or trains. The truss bridges consist of grouping of triangles that are manufactured straight from steel bars. Which are these bars? These are bars right here. Uh, the bridge materials are selected, and these are either welded or they are bolted in to the bridge. Thank you. Next, we'll be talking about the different types of bridges. The main types of bridge structures are beam, arch, cable, and truss. First, we'll be talking about the br beam bridges, which are the most simple and work better for short bridges. These bridges are cheap and easy to build because of the materials that are used and the amount of labor that is used to build the bridge. Next, we'll move to arch bridges. The main support of an arch bridge is the shape of the curve and the supports at each end of the arch called abutments that hold the arch together. This type of bridge res resists different forces or weights in different ways than other bridge types. The forces that arch bridges are good at holding up against are called shear and moment forces, which means that weight is on the bridge in the is on, the weight that is on the bridge is going in the same direction as the bridge and not going straight on top of it like a car. Next, we'll talk about cable bridges, which are very expensive to build, but can span longer distances and are very good looking bridges. These have forces that try to stretch the bridges, called tension forces. Sometimes though, the cable bridge can be badly affected by wind. Finally, we'll talk about truss, truss bridges that only experience tension and compression forces and not shear and bending forces. This means that they are very strong when there's a lot of weight, like heavy cars, on the bridge or even things that are hanging off, off of the bridge that cause tension. Truss bridges are very sturdy and can be less expensive than other bridge types. Finally, these bridges are very cool and good looking structures. A bridge is a structure that provides a passage over an obstacle such as valleys, rough terrain, or bodies of water by spanning those obstacles with natural or man-made materials. Bridges were first used in ancient times when modern civilizations started rising in new Mesopotamia. From that point on, knowledge, engineering, and manufacture of new bridge building materials spread beyond their borders, enabling slow but steady adaption of bridges all across the world. In the beginning, bridges were simple structures that were built from easily accessible natural resources such as wood, stone, and dirt. Because of that, they had the ability to span, the ability to only span short distances and their structural, structural integrity was low because mortar was not yet invented. Rain also played a factor in deterioration because it constantly dissolved the dirt fillings of the bridge. Revolution in bridge construction came when ancient Roman engineers figured out that excavated volcanic rocks would serve as excellent material for making mortar. This allowed for sturdier, more powerful, and larger structures than any civilization before them. Seeing the power of roads and connections to distant lands, Roman architects soon spread across Europe, Africa, and Asia, building bridges and roads of very high quality. Through this presentation, I'll talk about different bridges around the world. One of the first um, and earliest notable truss bridges was influenced by Julius Caesar, so that he and his armies could cross the Rhine River. This bridge is known as Caesar's Rhine Bridge. Here's a short clip explaining how ancient Romans were able to construct such a complex bridge in less than 10 days. The foundation of the bridge was a series of wooden piles driven into the bedrock of the river. Each pile was a foot and a half thick. Toward the middle of the bridge, they had to be up to 30 feet tall 
to reach from the surface to the bottom. By driving the piles in diagonally, Caesar's engineers added extra stability to the bridge current. Each set of piles was joined by a long connecting beam two feet thick. Lengths of timber were then laid across the beams, and the surface was finished with tightly wrapped bundles of stick. Next, I will talk about the longest spanning truss bridge in the world. It is the Ikitsuki Bridge, located in Japan. The Ikitsuki Bridge was completed in 1991 and has a main span of 1,300 feet. I've gone over a few famous bridges all around the world, but did you know there's a truss bridge that some of you may cross every day? The Minette Bridge is located in downtown Bremerton. It is a steel truss bridge with a span of 321 feet. The Minette Bridge was constructed in 1930. Originally, the bridge utilized timber in its structure, but in 1949, all of the wood on the bridge was replaced with concrete and steel components. In 2010, construction on a replacement bridge began, and the new Minette Bridge was finished on November 10, 2011. Thank you for watching our presentation. Have a good day.